Right, well, the demarcation problem was a hot button topic after Popper raised it. So Popper basically said something is scientific if any claim that you make, no matter how you come up with it, can be liable to be falsified by the facts. And he called this the uh, falsification criterion of science. Now, uh, that got into some serious trouble, logically speaking, and philosophers of science never really went along with Popper all the way. Some people did, but mostly they didn't. Um, with the arrival of Thomas Kuhn's uh, Structure of Scientific Revolutions, which was published in 1964, uh, a lot of um, philosophers of science became more sociological in their understanding of science. And so it became a lot harder to say what was and what was not science, because it then becomes a matter of science is what scientists do. And who are scientists? Well, they're those who do science, and it got very messy fairly quickly. Um, the resolution, I think, the, 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 the view that most people have about what is science these days is partly sociological, but it's also to do with ways of knowing the world. And um, some of the more extreme uh, philosophers, for example, Paul Feyerabend, held that uh, anything can be science, magic or creationism or, or um, homeopathy or, you know, whatever. Um, because what counts as good knowledge varies according to the worldview that each individual practitioner has. Not many philosophers would agree with that, I think. Uh, most of them would say something like, well, there may be boundary cases where we're not sure if it's science or not. For example, acupuncture. We're not entirely sure whether that works or, or doesn't, although I think the evidence is that it doesn't, but um, uh, I'm open to argument on that. But whatever you do say about science, you'd better say something that includes the exemplary cases of science, like Newtonian or Einsteinian physics or quantum mechanics. And if you can't uh, accommodate those, then there's something seriously wrong with what you count as science. Even if it turns out that there are examples of science that not everybody is going to agree upon. Um, an obvious one here would be economics. Uh, some people think economics is a science, other people think it's not. Some people have called it the dismal science. Um, so uh, my view is that most of the classic cases of science are pretty obvious. Um, but what makes something good science, only time will tell. And if something has been pushed again and again, for example, uh, the design argument in intelligent design, it's been pushed for about two and a half centuries and made zero progress. Now there is a, a scant chance that intelligent design views will suddenly start delivering promising scientific research. But if I were a betting man, I wouldn't put any money on it, right? Whereas string theory, well, I think the jury is still out. I know people who are ardent string theorists, and I know people who think that it's a complete and utter waste of physics uh, and, and money, and they should be putting uh, their efforts into other things. So um, it's unfortunate that there just isn't a simple answer to what is and is not science. It certainly can't be based on scientific method because every time uh, somebody has said, this is what scientific method is, uh, you've ended up getting um, exceptions to that, which everybody says is good science, and people who use that method, which everybody says is not good science.